everyone, Mama Micah here, and today is a quick video about my thoughts on the Nintendo Switch presentation. I am overwhelmingly excited for the Nintendo Switch. I think that the presentation was fantastic. Starting off, we now know that the Nintendo Switch will release on March 3rd, 2017 with a price tag of $299.99 in North America. Nintendo announced that there would be better online with more features and functionality, and starting in October 2017, it would be a paid service, just like on PlayStation and on Xbox. I think this is awesome though, because not only will we have better online like everyone has been asking for, but you get to try it for free for a few months. There will be some online games being released, we'll get to that later. So before October, when you have to pay for it, you will get to try out the online features and determine if it's worth it for you to pay for it as a subscription. Nintendo also announced that there would be no more region locking on their games, so you are free to play whatever games are released on the Switch. They also explained how the Switch has DNA inherited from past Nintendo consoles, and this was a really cool part of the presentation. They went through the history of Nintendo consoles and the innovations that they've made, from analog sticks to controllers having rumble, even to the GameCube having a handle on it so that it was portable. Nintendo has made a lot of innovations over the years, and it was really neat to see how past consoles have influenced the newest Nintendo console in the lineup. Next, they explained the three main ways to play the Nintendo Switch which there is TV mode where you are connected to your TV, there is tabletop mode where you place the Switch, it has a little kickstand, and you can play different games with it on a tabletop, and then they explain handheld mode when you have the Joy-Con controllers attached to it. Going through those different modes, it really showed a lot of the functionality that's built into the Nintendo Switch, and it really is just so many things. I think it's just a marvel of invention. All of the different ways that you can play with it, and all of the different things that are built into it, the different games that will be able to be released because of all the different ways that you can use the Nintendo Switch. We learned that the battery life would be between two and a half to six hours depending on the game that you're playing. I think that's perfectly acceptable because these are full console games being taken on the go. And I also was pretty happy about that because it made me think that the Nintendo 3DS isn't going anywhere. I absolutely adore the Nintendo 3DS. I have so much fun playing that console and it's just a fantastic device that I don't want to see go away. So knowing that the Nintendo Switch has a limited battery life depending on the game that you're playing. It made me very happy in a way to know that the Nintendo 3DS will still be around and they will still have games optimized for portability and games optimized for that fantastic battery life on the Nintendo 3DS. You can charge the Switch while you're playing it with an AC adapter and it's a USB-C connection which I think is awesome. It's not a little funny Nintendo cord and it's something that more and more people are using because of their smartphones now have USB-C. So those cords are becoming more common and inexpensive and it'll just be very easy to charge and play the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is Wi-Fi enabled and you can connect up to eight of them for multiplayer gaming. Next they went through the Joy-Con controllers. It was this really fun little magic show that they did. I thought it was just great and it was just very quirky and funny. They went through the different functionality of the Joy-Con controllers. The new HD rumble was described, and I think that looks incredible. I can't wait to experience it. There is an NFC reader and writer for Amiibo. They showed Breath of the Wild Amiibo, which really caught my eye. They showed the different functions of the Joy-Con controllers. There is a share button to share things on social media, and the way that you can turn the controllers on their side and you have left and right bumpers, so you've got a full controller in that Joy-Con. You can hold it sort of like a Wiimote like we're used to, or for certain games you can hold it sideways, and you've got two controllers right out of the box, which I think is fantastic. I know a lot of people were upset by the price tag of the extra Joy-Con controllers. It was $79.99 for a pack of two, but these are two controllers for $80, and that means four people can play games with you, or two people can play games if you use the Joy-Con grip. And I just think it's a pretty okay price tag when we have single controllers for Xbox and PlayStation being $60. To get two of these controllers for $80 really isn't that bad. 
And I don't think most people will need four controllers on launch day. I think most people would be pretty content to have two controllers for a period of time. And then in the future, they could p purchase the extra controllers. So it's not a huge expense all at once. Then we saw two games that they said were made possible by the Joy-Con controllers. First, we saw 1-2 Switch. This is a game they said that everyone can play. It looks like an awesome party game. There's a few different modes you can do. There was, they showed cowboys dueling it out. Uh, they showed a kind of rock, paper, scissors type game. It was just a lot of different party games that can be played with the Nintendo Switch. The idea behind this is that you'd place the Switch on a flat surface with the kickstand, and you'd have a person on either side of the Switch with a Joy-Con controller, and there are just various games you can play that way. And I think it's awesome. It would be, aw it would be great for families, for parties. It's a very versatile console, and the more that they went through the presentation, we saw all the functionality of it, and 1-2 Switch was just the beginning. Next, we saw ARMS. They said that this was a game with depth and difficulty, but it looks like a fighting game that anyone can pick up and play. You've got these spring-loaded arms with, like, boxing gloves on the end of them. The characters looked really fun and imaginative. It was really colorful and bright. And like I said, it's a fighting game that anyone can play, and it looked phenomenal. I adore fighting games, but I'm horrible at them. I love watching Mortal Kombat 10 tournaments. I get so hooked on them and on the intensity, but I'm simply dreadful at that game. And as much as I love Smash Brothers, even that sometimes, I've not mastered that game by any means. I have a lot of fun playing that game with my friends, but I'll never be a very great player. So ARMS looks like something that even I could have a great time with and get good at if I kept up with it because the controls look very simple but hard to master. Next we saw an announcement for Splatoon 2. I loved the way that they announced this. They had a researcher come out and he was dressed like a scientist and he was being really silly and doing all these motions. I thought it was great. He was talking about the new squids that he had discovered and the new ways he discovered that they control their turf. It was really fun and a very imaginative way to announce Splatoon 2. This game I'm very excited for because we will not have to play with the Wii U gamepad. Splatoon was a game that really caught my interest when it was announced for the Wii U, but I was really upset when I learned that you had to play with the Wii U gamepad. And I gave it a try, but it was just too difficult for me to get motion controls into a strategic online shooter. Playing with the gamepad was alright, but having to move it around to aim and everything, it was just so foreign to me that I really couldn't wrap my head around it, and I was really discouraged because this game has been so popular and it looks like so much fun. I love watching gameplay of it, but I simply can't get into it, and I'm just not good at those motion controls for a shooting game. So I'm really happy that Splatoon 2, you'll be able to play it with different controllers and you won't be locked into motion controls. I'm not even sure if there is motion controls in it. I've seen some gameplay of people playing Splatoon 2 and it appears that they're just using their hands like any normal video game holding the controller steady. So I'm very hopeful about this game and I'm very excited that it'll be a, a true sequel to Splatoon and it's not a port of Splatoon over to the Nintendo Switch. Splatoon 2 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch in summer 2017 and they said that there would be ongoing in-game events planned and I think that ties into what they were talking about having more online functionality and enhanced experiences Keeping games like this alive with multiplayer events like we see on other consoles. We see Gears of War is a fantastic example of they'll have events around the holidays and things like that. Or they'll have events like Nashers only in the online or Torquebos only, Torquebo tag, different things like that. And those are really fun and I enjoy those events. So having something like that on a Nintendo console I think was a great step for them. The next thing that we saw was Mario in a City and I freaked out out. This game looks fantastic. They said that Mario has left the Mushroom Kingdom for other strange worlds. A lot of people were saying that the city didn't look very good, but in my eyes I see it as this is how Nintendo imagines our world. This is how Mario would see our world if he came from the Mushroom Kingdom. It would look strange to him and the people would look funny. So I think that conceptually it looked fantastic and the other worlds that he visited, there was one world that had all this giant food and they just looked like so much fun. You're flying around in a little spaceship or as a little ship as your hub world I should say 
and it was just really cool. I think that the game looks fantastic. I was a little bummed that this game won't be coming out until holiday 2017, but at the same time, it is great for those of us who don't have a ton of money to spend all at once because we have games that are spaced out. The Nintendo Switch comes out in March, Splatoon 2 is coming out in summer, Mario will be coming out on holiday 2017, and so I think it's really awesome that the games are kind of dispersed like that and you don't have to pick and choose which games you want. You'll have a few months to save up before each game. There were a few more just quick announcements. Xenoblade 2 was announced, Fire Emblem Warriors was announced, both of those games look fantastic. There were a few titles that were Japan only that were announced and they said that there are over 80 games in development for the Nintendo Switch. I think that's really encouraging and I really do think that Nintendo is going to put their all into this console. We saw a really cool Atlas game that turned out to be Shin Megami Tensei. That trailer was just really cool. And then we saw a trailer that literally stole my heart. As soon as I saw it, my breath was taken away. I didn't blink the whole time. The name of the game is Project Octopath Traveler, but it really stunned me and I'm just so intrigued. I really hope that this game is a North American release because I'm dying to play it. This is by Square Enix. What I saw reminded me a lot of Bravely Default and Bravely Second. You've got this very old school looking world that you actually play in, but then you have the anime cutscenes that were beautiful. And the old school type world just looked so charming and fun. I couldn't wait to see more of it. I really hope that game isn't too far away and I hope it gets a North American release very quickly. And next we saw some announcements about third party support. Todd Howard came out and announced that Skyrim would be available available on the Nintendo Switch. I think that is a fantastic move. And then we also saw an executive from EA announce that the FIFA games would be available on Nintendo Switch. Seeing that third party support was fantastic and we're already off to a good start with the Switch. I know that it's not a lot of third party games to start out with, but those are games that require some power from your console and I think that's encouraging. And it's also games that a lot of people can enjoy. A lot of people love those games. And previously, maybe you were torn between, well, I really want to play Mario and Zelda, but I also am a big FIFA fan, and I'd like to play those games too. And so now we have a Nintendo console that will have all of those games in addition to our fantastic Mario games. The last thing that really got me was that I saw I Am Setsuna in the final game trailer that they played at the end of the presentation. It was just so cool to see it. And now if I want to replay the game, I can definitely replay it on Switch and experience a whole new way to play it. I think that'll just be amazing. Being able to take that game on the go with me would be awesome as well. This was such a fun and imaginative show. It was Nintendo through and through and they stayed true to their brand and to themselves. They're quirky, they're fun, they're a games company, and I think it was a fantastic presentation. Sometimes we see other presentations and they're so buttoned up, everyone's in a suit, and Nintendo just isn't like that. They're fun, they're making games, and games are supposed to be fun. That's what Nintendo is all about. So I thought this presentation was a huge success. They lastly announced that Zelda Breath of the Wild would be available on launch day, March 3rd, 2017. That was a huge announcement. And once again, in terms of budget, Zelda Breath of the Wild is coming out in March, Splatoon 2 will be out in summer, Mario will be out in the holidays. Of course there will be a lot of games interspersed between that, but the really big titles aren't all clumped together. So not only do we have things to look forward to throughout the year with big games being kind of, you know, dispersed throughout the year, but we also have time to budget and save up for games. I am feeling overwhelmingly positive and extremely excited about the Nintendo Switch. They have it all. Family games, third-party support with FIFA, NBA 2K18, and Skyrim, and I'm sure more will be announced. They have got plenty of RPGs and classic Nintendo games. This is a Nintendo console through and through. It's a very rounded out experience, and it's got something for everyone. But if you're not excited for the Nintendo Switch, that's okay. 
especially with gaming, not everything is made for everyone. And there are consoles that simply aren't for everybody. I think that almost anyone could enjoy the Nintendo Switch if they purchased one. But I do understand if your favorite games are online shooters, if you love Battlefield, Call of Duty, or even if you love just all of the sports games, and maybe not all of them will be on Nintendo Switch, I perfectly understand if this isn't the console for you. But if you're like me, and you love Mario, if you love seeing classic Nintendo characters getting new life and getting new games, if you love JRPGs especially, this console has it all. Because it will have a few third-party games, I hope to see more third-party games as well, but I'm alright with it being just a Nintendo machine or just a JRPG machine. It's a Nintendo console, it's games you can only play on this console, and I'm so incredibly excited to get one. I pre-ordered mine at 3.15 in the morning. I stayed up the whole night waiting for the pre-orders to go live. They went live on Best Buy, they went live on Walmart. I was waiting for Amazon because they have the fastest shipping. And I was getting really nervous because Best Buy had it, then they sold out. Walmart had it, they sold out. They kept going back and forth between sold out and in stock. I was getting a little bit antsy, but finally Amazon had the pre-orders for the UK, and then I had to wait even longer before they had the pre-orders for North America. But I was very excited to see it, I'm very excited to get it, and it's only a few short weeks away. And I truly do think that the Nintendo Switch will be a worthwhile investment. I absolutely love the Wii U. I'll admit first that it doesn't have a ton of games in a lot of people's eyes because it doesn't have a lot of third-party support. But I absolutely loved the Wii U. And now that I'm so excited for the Nintendo Switch, I took a few games out of my Wii U stack to play again. I've been playing Super Mario 3D World again, and that game is just phenomenal. I've been playing Mario Kart 8 again, and I just can't get enough of it. I truly love the Wii U, and I've, there's going to be a few more games that I'm going to buy, just because I am a little bit worried that those games might become scarce once the Switch comes out. So there's a few games that I have to have for the Wii U that I will be getting, and you'll see a video about those soon. But overall, I think the Wii U was a sound investment, and I think the Nintendo Switch will only be better. So those are my thoughts about the Nintendo Switch presentation and about the Nintendo Switch itself. I am so excited for this console to be released. I cannot wait to get it. And I got mine in the black and gray version. I thought the red and blue was really cool, but Amazon didn't have that at 3 in the morning when I was up. But I really like the black and gray one. And I like that the red and blue controllers are not limited only to the launch kind of edition. You will be able to buy those controllers in the future in red and blue, so if I want those later on, I can get them. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about the Nintendo Switch presentation, and if you are just as excited as I am for the Nintendo Switch to be released, let me know which games you're most excited for to come to the console. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye!